So one limitation that HTML has is that the method request on forms can only accept a post or a get. So if you're trying to stick with a RESTful based API, like something like this, where you have post, put, patch, and delete for different actions that you're wanting to perform against a particular resource, with native HTML, that's not possible. However, Adonis.js has something called method spoofing, which allows us to kind of mock up those additional HTTP methods, which are put, patch, and delete. So here's what this looks like. On your actual form, you'll still have your method as post, but on your action, at the end of the URL, to signify what the actual method that you want your request to be received as, you would do as a query string underscore method equals and then whatever that HTTP method is. And then whenever Adonis receives this request, it's going to check, okay, is this a post request? It is. Does it have method spoofing on the end of it? It does. Is method spoofing enabled on this project? And if it is, then it will use put as that requests HTTP method instead of post. So let's dive into that a little bit further here. So I have a project here, and this is up on GitHub. If you'd like to pull it down, there's a zero one starting one branch if you'd like to follow along. We have four different forms here, one for post, one for put, one for patch, and one for delete. Currently, if you submit any of these, we'll get back a nice little toast message saying what request type it received for the HTTP method. And currently, all of these are going to be sending out delete requests because within this project, we have not yet enabled method spoofing and we haven't rigged it up to the actions. So let's go ahead and dive into our configuration within our app here. This is where the toggle for HTTP method spoofing lives. And let's go ahead and turn allow method spoofing to true. Now method spoofing will be enabled within this project. So we can go ahead and dive into our forms and add that onto our actions. Now for the post, we don't need to change anything thing because by default, it's going to be post due to the HTML nature of our form. But for our put, patch, and delete forms, we will need to add this on. Now, we can either do it through the route builder method here, or we can just tack it on to the end of the string. So I'll show both ways here. So we can tack it on to the end of the string if we're not going to need any other query strings on this particular route. And you might think that this looks a little bit cleaner. So here's an example of that. So then this will generate out our actual route URL, and then we'll just append on the query string at the end of it. It's kind of a hard coded concatenation of those two values. Alternatively, we can do it within the route method here. So the first set of arguments there would be our parameters, if we have any, which we do not. And then the next one will be our options. And here's where we can add in our query string. So we would do underscore method and then whatever we want this particular thing to be. So in this case, it would be patch. And let's go ahead and do that for our delete as well. Before we give this a test, let's go ahead and run through our routes real quick. So we have a post put patch and delete all pointing to ping. And then we have our ping handler, which handles each one of these routes. That's just going to add a flash message onto our session saying what type of request it received and then redirect back to the previous page. So that's all that our form submissions here will be doing. So we can go ahead and test this out. So our post should still go to a post. Our put should now go to a put. And you can see right there it is patch to patch and delete to delete. So our HTTP method spoofing is now up and running and working just fine. So next we're going to clean up our forms a little bit by moving them into components for each different HTTP method. But this is in general how you can go about keeping a RESTful API based route structure. Uh, even if you're just using HTML forms, method spoofing really helps you keep that in check and keeps your routes from getting really verbose in what the actual URL is by allowing you to continue to use your resourceful routes. So let's go ahead and clean these forms up by extracting them out into separate components. So within our resources under views, we have a components directory here. I'm going to go ahead and just create a new folder under here called forms, and then we'll just create a new file for each different HTTP type. So we'll do post.edge. This one will be the most straightforward. And we'll just copy this particular form right here and paste this in here. And then inside of here, we will do await slots.main and this will be our main slot so that whenever we put anything inside of this actual component, it will just be plopped in right here where this main slot is. We can leave the method post as is, um, but we will want to change this action to be dynamic. So we'll just go ahead and change this to action and then we can pass that in whenever we call this form. So let's give this a save and let's try to replace what we have here for our post using that new component. So we can do at forms dot and we can do this because we are using a component that is inside of the components directory. Anytime that you're using a component inside of the components directory, you don't need to explicitly call component and then provide the name. You can do straight just at and then whatever the actual component name is. And here we have a folder. So anything inside of the folder, we can reference from the component using a dot. So we can do forms.post, and then this requires an action here. So we can do route ping.post, 
as the route value. And then we'll just replace the end with an end tag. So we should be good to save this. Let's jump back into our project here. Not getting any errors, we can go ahead and send this off and you can see it works just fine. We can use the same structure here to make these routes a little less verbose whenever we need to append on the actual HTTP method via the spoofing mechanism uh, by extracting these out to components. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for put patch and delete. So I'm just gonna copy our post here paste this in here one more time. Let's rename this and we'll do put first. And there's several different ways that we can go about this. So first, we don't know whether or not the action coming in is already going to have a query string on it. And we would want to support that. Um, so we could accept just the route variables here and then provide them in there. So this would be the identifier and then you would have the params and then your options. That's one option. And then we could merge the options with our put HTTP method spoofing. Another approach that we could do is just check. So we could do at set and then we can overwrite the actual action value by doing action dot includes and then check for the query string signifier there. If it's found, then we could do action and underscore method equals put. Otherwise, if it's not found, then we could do action and then we could just initiate that query string right there. So those are two different approaches um, depending on what you are looking for your end goal. There's, I'm sure there's other ways to go about it, but let's go ahead and get this rigged up here. So let's do at forms.put and then our action will be route ping.put and then, and then that should do it for that. Let's go ahead and at end and let's test it out. So let's send off our put and you can see there we are still getting a put request. And let's take a look at that end form action that we are building out and you can see slash ping query string with underscore method equals put. Let's go ahead and test and make sure that our query string structure here is working okay by providing some other query strings. So we could do test, testing, give that a save. Take a look at it here and you can see we have slash ping and then a query string of test equals testing and underscore method equals put. So it looks correct. Let's go ahead and test it out. And you can see that's still working a okay there as well. So really all that we need to do is duplicate what we are doing for the put for the patch and delete as well. So we can paste this in here two times. Let's take one of those, rename it to patch and the other rename that to delete. And all that we need to do is swap out the actual HTTP method that we want to use here and do the same for patch. And this is also a point where if you are using your CSRF protection, you could plop your CSRF field within your form component. That way you don't need to remember to actually put it on each one of your individual forms. It will just be within your actual components so that you don't need to remember about that. And let's go ahead and rig these two up here. So we have at forms.patch the action value for this will be route ping.patch and we can do at end and we'll do the same thing for at forms.delete action route ping delete and the final end there and we should be good to go ahead and test those two as well so there's our patch and there's our delete so all of these are now working a-okay and our forms here are a lot less verbose because we've taken the actual need to specify what the HTTP method spoofing is out of the route parameter that we're providing into our action and instead extracting it into a component in itself, making it a little bit more readable to see what exactly this is and making our route more legible to read as well. So that's how you can go about HTTP method spoofing and extracting those out into helper components to make things a little bit simpler for your application.